Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 8, Episode 11, Faupology. Oh, you know, I still feel sorry for Iceland. Now I have to feel sorry for Milan? How long have these ladies been there? Three, four weeks? No? Just a couple days? Oh my god. A lot has happened in like two days. I don't know what's happening with these women, but they have all these very specifically planned outings with specific pairings that do not include Siggy and Dolores together, which I find very strange. Today we pick up where the ladies left off with the outdoor lunch. And Melissa takes off early because she's going bike riding with Danielle and Siggy. Again, kind of a weird trio. And Teresa, Margaret, and Dolores are going to have a cooking lesson. And then they're going to be cooking the dinner for all the ladies that night. So yeah, <laughs> what could go wrong? As you recall, Siggy was going to go home, but she decided, no, I'm going to stay with the people that I love. What? Aren't they back in Jersey? The people that you love? Who, Dolores? I just... She does stay, and she and Danielle and Melissa go on a bike riding tour of the city. Meanwhile, the others are learning how to make pasta, and clearly Margaret is a first-timer here, and Teresa's kind of acting like she knows all this stuff already. Yet, it's sort of funny how little she actually does know. The chef was kind of correcting her a little bit on a couple of things. And when she chops up all the meat, she chops so hard that there are wood shavings all mixed into the meat. Flipping back to the bike riders, they've decided to stop in the park and have a little picnic and drink some wine and talk about the dinner that they're going to have that night. And Siggy says she's not bringing up anything because she does not want drama. Okay. So we're at the dinner that night, which is in the chef's home. Uh, has the chef not seen the show? Because I would not host a dinner for those ladies in my home. As usual, it's starting off very cordial. They're asking about each other's days, how it was, how the cooking lesson went, and the others are asking about the bike riding. Everything's great, except Melissa notices that Margaret's very quiet. And understandably, Margaret has been called anti-Semitic, and now she doesn't know what to say or if she should even open her mouth at all. Melissa notices and Melissa calls her out to speak privately with her and she asks her if she's okay. And she tells her that, yeah, I am fine. I just, I'm afraid to say anything. Anything I do or say is going to be the wrong thing. So, you know, I'll just, I'll try to seem more upbeat. I'm, I'll be okay. But before they go back in, we hear the conversation of the ladies that are still at the table and Siggy is again saying, I should just can't get over the Hitler comment. Now, the Hitler comment was just the fact that she mentioned Hitler's name because there was nothing about the comment itself. She was comparing Hitler to evil and I'm not sure why anybody would have a problem with that. But Siggy cannot get over it. And she said, you know, it's just Hitler mentioning his name. It was just a trigger for me. And Teresa's like, oh yeah, because like when I got back from um, jail, I did not even want to say the word jail. That was like a trigger word for me too. Okay. So when Margaret and Melissa walk back in, Margaret hears Teresa say that part of the comment. And then Siggy said, yeah, that's how it is for me with Hitler. So Margaret hears that. They sit down and then Margaret says, listen, I, I need to uh, talk to Siggy for a second. I would never do anything to intentionally hurt you. If I knew that Hitler was a trigger for you, I mean, even just saying the word Hitler, was a trigger for you. I never would have done that because I have no intention of hurting you. I would never want to. And for that, I am truly sorry. And it was heartfelt. At least I fell for it. If 
If it wasn't, I, she's a damn good actress because that felt real to me. And then crickets, nothing from Siggy. Siggy just drank her wine and did not respond at all. So then the food started being brought out and it just hung there. Then that, that apology just kind of hung in the air for a minute there and the food was being brought out and Danielle couldn't take it anymore. She felt like she had to defend Margaret. So she said, well, listen, I just think what Margaret just did is really brave. And uh, you know, she just put herself out there and I, I just, I think she should be applauded for that. Something like that, but come on. I mean, I'm team Margaret in this particular instance, although I love Siggy, I will always love Siggy, but she's been a wackadoodle this entire season. Just saying. So for sure, I'm team Margaret in this particular situation, but was it brave? She apologized. She should have, if only because something she said hurt somebody else and she didn't mean for that to happen, so you apologize. I don't know that that's such a brave thing she did, but personally, I think Siggy calling Margaret anti-Semitic is far, far worse. And that needs to be apologized for. I think even Teresa kind of stood up for Margaret and said, oh, I, I, that just kind of brought tears to my eyes, your, your apology, Margaret. And so at least Margaret got some validation, but not from the person she apologized to. Anyway, we don't see any more of that dinner. So I guess fireworks really didn't go off. So the next day, which I think is their final day of the trip, which again, oh my God, I would think those women had been there a month. Could this really have just been like a three day trip? On that final day, we've got some new pairings. We have Margaret and Danielle, and those two are going to Margaret's shoe factory. Then we have Siggy and Teresa, and those two are going off together to spend the day. And Melissa and Dolores, those two are going to have gelato together and talk. Again, Siggy and Dolores not together. So Teresa and Siggy are going to some churches maybe, or just walking around sightseeing. And Teresa mentions that she asked somebody at the hotel where would be a good place for her to go and pray or think about her mother or something like that. Anyway, they, is it just me? This feels strange. First of all, I feel like there would be thousands of beautiful churches in Milan, and I'm sure there must be, but, she chooses to um, go to this like picture of Jesus that seems to be next to the street. And I, I, maybe I'm wrong about this, or maybe I'm not remembering it right, but they're just outside, like on the sidewalk, and it seems like there's a busy street next to them. And there's a picture of Jesus, and that is where she's choosing to think about her mom and she's got her rosary beads and she's talking to Siggy about missing her and stuff like that. And okay, I'm a sap for this kind of thing maybe, but I think Siggy said something so sweet to Teresa. She said, I know how you feel like you were robbed of having those 11 months with your mom and then losing your mom so soon after that. But Siggy says to her, your being gone for those 11 months provided this opportunity for your mom to get close to your daughters. And I just thought that was a great way of looking at that. So I thought that was really sweet and a great gift to give Teresa to kind of hang on to, you know? Anyway. <laughs> They then sit down to get to talking about the ladies and the trip and everything. And Siggy says something, of course, about Margaret. Feeling like ever since she brought Margaret into this group, she's kind of attacked her. And you know what? This is the second time Siggy is saying that. Now we're getting to the real core of the problem that Siggy has with Margaret. It isn't that she thinks she's anti-Semitic. It isn't even that she thinks she's anti-Siggy. She is jealous that Margaret seems to have bonded and gotten herself in really good with the other ladies. And they kind of love her and they're embracing her. At least Danielle, Teresa, and Melissa seem to be. I think Siggy's a little jealous. 
Do you guys think I'm off base with that or am I maybe on to something? Because that would make me feel bad, I think, if I brought somebody, a new friend, into my group of friends and they all just really started hanging out with her more and they loved her and they're doing stuff with her and um, I get it. I kind of get it. Might sting a little bit. Teresa said, she called you soggy flicker, but Kim D called me an adulterer. Well, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I stand corrected. What Teresa actually said was, I was called an adultery. <laughs> yeah. And Siggy said, yeah, and doesn't that hurt? And Teresa, to Teresa's credit, Teresa said, yeah, but I mean, are you, do you consider that the same thing? She's accusing me of cheating on my husband. Siggy's response was, well, hurt is hurt. Really, Siggy? To the confession camp, Teresa said, um, soggy flicker is kind of like a tiny little cut. Being called an adulterer is like getting shot. I mean, one will take you to the hospital and the other you have to put a Band-Aid on. So, come on, Siggy. If Teresa even understands the difference, shouldn't you? So we get to our last night in Milan and it's the dinner. All the ladies are showing up and they have decided to have dinner at the hotel in a private room. Good idea, ladies. Quick observation, do they plan or color coordinate their outfits? Because we've got an entire like black and shades of pink story happening for this dinner. I'm loving it. All those shades of kind of a soft blush pink and black, I like it. I would even go so far as to say all housewives of all franchises, when they are going to be together at a dinner, they should all dress in a coordinating fashion. I would like to see that. Leave a comment down below if you agree. <laughs> Before the dinner begins, Melissa would like to toast to friendship in a great trip, and Siggy has to interrupt. Uh, gulp. And she said, I would like Margaret to know that she gave me a very heartfelt apology at dinner last night, and I was unable to respond at the time because I needed time to process it. I want you to know I do accept your apology, and I thank you for it. So the first thing Margaret says is, I, I need you to, to say this and I need you to say it out loud. Do you really think I'm anti-Semitic? And Siggy, all you have to do is immediately say no. But no, that's not what she does. Instead of saying no, she says, well, there was a reason that I said it. And she kind of goes through the whole thing about ever since the soggy flicker thing and blah, blah, blah. She said, maybe it's just that you're more anti-Siggy. I'm sorry if I hurt you by saying that, but I really, I started to question whether you might be because of all those things you said. You could see all over Margaret's body that she was trying to hold it together. And she said, okay, I am trying to accept your apology, but you aligned me with a hate group. And that's just not okay. That can be relationship ending. That is career ending. And she talked about all the people in her life who are Jewish, that now this is on the air and how bad that looks, how horrible that is. Finally, Siggy admits that, no, I don't think you're anti-Semitic. That should have been said a long time ago. And you know, calling her that should never have been done in the first place with all the real anti-Semitism that is in the world, you know that Margaret Josephs is not your problem. Anyway, this episode ends all kind of nice and happy, and Margaret ends up inviting everyone at the table to her birthday party, which is a disco theme, kind of a Studio 54. And after everybody explains what Studio 54 is to Teresa, and probably Melissa, they all kind of have a laugh and they're all getting along great. But previews of future episodes show that the fireworks will begin again. Of course they will. 
But that is all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please join me back here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked this episode. And don't forget to comment. I love to hear from you guys. Till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>